you are going to want to see this. Today, we dive into our recap of 2023 and our forecast for 2024, where the Federal Reserve is still aiming for that soft landing, AI giants continue to dominate, and we look at the history of market returns during presidential election years. And we'll also look at various forecasts for 2024 from multiple investment firms. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Joe Masick, Portfolio Manager and Investment Advisor for IA Private Wealth. Welcome back to my channel, Investing Made Simple, where you can find the most trusted information on building your net worth. The stock market ended on a high note as 2023 came to an extraordinary close. After plunging more than 33% in 2022 and soaring 43.6% in 2020, the NASDAQ Composite finished the year with its fifth best yearly performance ever of 43.4%, setting it up for two of its top six years in the current decade. The S&P 500 increased 24.2% in 2023, more than double its historical average, and recovering admirably from a 19.4% loss in 2022. The Dow Jones managed to eke out a comparatively small 13.7%, and the commodity-heavy TSX Composite gained 11.75% at year's end. Despite the record highs at the end of December, the first week of January brings a bit of a different tone, with the Nasdaq and S&P 500 having some choppiness. But as of this writing, the markets are right back to the record highs, at least in overall numbers. This year, it's generally believed on Wall Street that the Federal Reserve will successfully accomplish the soft landing it's looking for, meaning that there won't be a recession and interest rate reductions and the roll-off on the balance sheet will occur in an orderly fashion. Many analysts believe that in this situation, the general market performance will be improved. Although the forecast for the 2024 performance of the stock market are mixed, most people believe that there will be increases between 8 and 9%, which is marginally less than the S&P 500 index's historical average rate of return of almost 10%. Furthermore, it's generally anticipated that artificial intelligence will continue to be a dominant driver in the investment world for the foreseeable future. But as always, before we get too deep into the video, I'd like to go through my usual disclaimer. And if you have any questions surrounding your investments on a personal level, it'd be best if you reached out to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. My contact details are now provided in the description below. I bring over 24 years of experience in investing in financial concepts, provide fully licensed and trusted investment guidance, and would love to hear from you. Okay, now back to our video. Now, as I stated in my most recent post for the second half of the year, the majority of the year's gains were concentrated in a select group of large corporations, mainly the Magnificent Seven stocks. The stock market's overall performance outside of these giants was far less than exciting. You can see evidence of this when you look at the performance numbers of the Dow Jones and TSX Composite. Choosing the correct investments became difficult as a result. Nonetheless, the market as a whole seemed to start to recover in the final two months of 2023 as major indices increased, giving investors a little more to smile about. The majority of Wall Street believes that the success of the 2024 stock market largely depends on whether or not the Federal Reserve can deliver a soft landing. Although there's no official definition, according to Wall Street, a soft landing means the Fed needs to keep interest rates high enough to slow down the economy and control inflation without causing a full-blown recession, which would be considered a hard landing. Now, it is very important to note, throughout the history of the Federal Reserve, they have aimed for soft landings in the economy virtually every time, trying to smoothly slow down growth without causing a recession. And while they frequently deliver this soft landing message and try their utmost to exude confidence in their ability to do this, their track record of actually achieving the soft landing is, well, not great. This is not to say that the Fed isn't working hard to be able to do this. It's just a very hard thing to do. How hard? Well, slowing down the US economy and achieving a soft landing has been described as very similar to trying to slow roll through a stop sign without coming to a complete stop, but you have to apply the brakes six miles in advance of the stop sign, and you won't know how hard you have applied the brakes until you are at the stop sign. Yeah. 
it's that hard. The first and only officially acknowledged soft landing occurred in 1994, and many still question whether or not that was an actual soft landing. Even if they did achieve it, it was likely luck that played a part. Now, it should also be noted that up until 2009, the Fed only really had one lever they could manipulate to try to achieve the soft landing, which was interest rates. But now they have two extremely complex levers interest rates, and the balance sheet. And as we've discussed many times on this channel, achieving a soft landing does not seem likely as the Fed had very little luck in doing so with just one lever, never mind two levers they now have to try to control. That said, the economy is clearly slowing down in a controlled way with less spending and a cooling job market. Many experts are predicting that the US economy won't grow as fast in the last part of 2023 as it did in the previous quarter. But a complete downturn is not expected. Concerns that have cropped up like a Middle Eastern war, government shutdown, and UAW strike are seen as only minor and short-lived obstacles to growth, not as black swan events that can truly shake the markets. Don't fight the Fed. It's a common saying in investing, and it could hold true for 2024. In December, the Fed hinted at stopping interest rate hikes and projected cuts of 75 basis points for 2024. According to the latest projections, Fed members anticipate reducing the key policy rate to 4%. 0.6% by the end of 2024, down from the current range of 5.25 to 5.5%. This is a change from September's outlook, which predicted a 5.1% rate for the next year. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell expressed confidence in the economy, noting decreasing inflation and a balanced labor market. And as of December 28th, the CME Fed Watch indicates a 14.5% chance of a quarter point rate cut at the January 31st meeting, rising to an 81% probability by March. Market expectations suggest a significant number of rate cuts in 2024, potentially bringing down the target rate from 4.25% to 4%. However, some other investment firms are less optimistic, citing considerable uncertainty due to factors like the strength of the US economy and persistent high inflation. Despite a slight drop in core prices in November, the consumer price index on December 12th revealed ongoing challenges, with gas prices decreasing but overall consumer prices remaining high. The Federal Reserve seems cautious about cutting rates too soon, emphasizing the need to balance inflation concerns with the risks of tightening monetary policy to a aggressively. With all that said, just a quick note on the yield curve and the balance sheet. Now, as I've stated in previous market commentaries, the yield curve is still very deeply inverted, and as of this writing has a spread of negative 130 basis points. Furthermore, the central bank is continuing to shrink its balance sheet, which implies there will be even less liquidity in the markets going forward. These two indicators point to the possibility that there still may be some economic difficulties ahead, and that we are not yet in the clear. It serves as a warning that things could not go as smoothly as we'd like, so we should monitor the situation very closely. So what do we see ahead for 2024? Well, with the November election looming, the stakes are high as it determines who will take charge of crucial positions, including the White House and Congress. Add to the fact that there are some legal questions surrounding Trump's run for 2024, the 30,000 foot view from an election year brings positive implications for the 2024 stock market outlook. Surprisingly, in election year, stock prices prices tend to rise. Looking back on a chart from Forbes Advisors since 1952, the S&P 500 has consistently shown gains during presidential re-election years with downturns occurring only in 1960, 2000, and 2008 when new presidential candidates entered the scene. Notably, the stock market also tends to perform very well when it predicts the incumbent party's victory, indicating a connection between market performance and public sentiment. This historical pattern aligns with the findings from the Stock Traders Almanac, revealing a trend of the stock market outperforming in both presidential election years and the preceding years. The initial two years of a presidential term often see challenges challenges such as wars or recessions, but the latter half tends to be much more prosperous for the stock market. Now let's talk about earnings. In 2023, the S&P 500 faced some serious challenges with limited earnings growth as annual projections indicated an increase of less than 1% in earnings per share and a modest 2.3% uptick in revenue as highlighted by John Butters, a senior analyst at FactSet. 
The quarterly performance was uneven with earnings showing declines of negative 1.7% and negative 4.1% in the first and second quarters respectively. However, a positive shift occurred in the third quarter with a notable earnings growth of 4.9% and there's a projected 2.4% growth for the fourth quarter according to the estimates from FactSet. Now, as the focus turns to 2024, many analysts express a more optimistic outlook for seeing a substantial year-over-year -year earnings growth of 11.5% as mentioned by Butters. Despite this positive forecast, there are conflicting voices on Wall Street anticipating that the ongoing economic slowdown might have repercussions for the equity markets. There are a lot of different perspectives emerging among investment firms, adding to the complexity of the predictions. Yardeni Research holds the most bullish stance we've seen, projecting gains of over 14%, while JP Morgan is on the doom and gloom side, expecting an 11% decline in the S&P 500 in 2024. The consensus among these varying viewpoints settles around a 5,100 point target for the S&P, indicating a moderate expectation for gains in the stock market next year. Investors like myself will be closely monitoring these forecasts and adjusting strategies accordingly in the response to the evolving economic landscape. So where do we stand? Well, in approaching 2024, our optimism is still tempered with some caution. Considering the persistent massive inversion of the yield curve, the ongoing roll-off of the balance sheet, and the market's notable concentration in the Magnificent Seven, I follow the yield curve. And right now, the yield curve being as inverted as long and as as deep as it has been raises concerns about the economic outlook. The roll-off of the balance sheet adds an extra element of uncertainty as these are, in my opinion, shadow rate hikes that are still quantitative tightening. Moreover, the market's concentration in seven companies implies that the positive performance has been driven by a select few rather than a broad array of stocks. This is also not positive. And while we maintain a cautious outlook, these factors underscore the importance of a vigilant and nuanced approach to navigate potential challenges and opportunities in the coming year. The positives will lie in rates coming down and the beaten up interest sensitive sectors such as the financials, REITs, and utilities rebounding if rates are in fact reduced by the Fed. Now this information is great, but it really depends on what kind of investor you are. For younger investors with many years before retirement and low amounts invested, the next 12 to 18 months should be a great time for you. You should expect market ups and downs. Don't be afraid of the days when the markets go down. Instead, see them as opportunities to buy. If you've been buying all along during these market dips recently, keep doing it focusing on the good buying opportunities rather than short-term results, which probably won't matter as much in the long term anyway. In a market downturn, you'll probably find some great deals on some strong companies. Despite more market drops in the future, sticking to this plan usually pays off in the long run. Now, if you're close to retirement, this current market can be very challenging. With a lot of money invested, likely your life savings, and limited chances to recover losses, it's critical to try to preserve your capital through this period. If you've already reduced your equity exposure, consider sticking to that plan during market highs, keeping an eye on your portfolio, and if there are any any risky investments, think about swapping them for more stable options. Now might be a great time to be reducing some of those risks if you haven't done so already. Did you know that there are many studies out there confirming that clients that work with an investment advisor or a portfolio manager often have up to three times the net worth and are generally happier and less anxious about retiring than going it alone? Do you want to know how to choose a good financial advisor? Well, click here to learn the amazing differences between advisors. We'll see you soon.